I'm going to now invite Jessica Wilkerson. She's the Director of Cybersecurity Research at the Linux Foundation. Jessica focuses on the intersection of cybersecurity and open source hardware. She has spent over five years as a congressional staffer with the House Committee on Energy and Commerce, covering cybersecurity issues in the telecommunications, commercial energy, and health sectors. You can read the rest of the bio. <laughs> And uh, can you start with something which we can't read in the bio and then go on to your slides? I have no slides. Oh, but, perfect. Uh, I, can, I can start out with something that is not in my bio, and that is that I am currently a part-time law student, so your sympathies are welcome because I have finals coming up in a few weeks. Um, so <laughs> any and all sympathies, very, very welcome. Um, so if you, if you read the title of my talk, sitting here I actually realized I, I think I accidentally buried the lead a little bit because uh, criticality of, of open source security is obviously a huge issue. It's something that I'm primarily concerned about if you look at my title. Um, but I don't actually mean it in the way that I think the title suggests that I mean it, which is that security is, is important for its own sake. That, that's certainly true. It's, it's also important for a number of other reasons. The reason that I bring it up to this room specifically is because of my previous position. When I was with uh, the Committee on Energy and Commerce, I was a professional staff member there for five and a half years, one of the, the biggest committees in the United States Congress, huge focus on tech issues. Uh, and I was the cybersecurity expert that was associated with that committee. Um, and while we were there, while I was there in particular, and this is actually how Mike and I, who is now my boss, uh, got to know each other originally. Uh, when I was a staffer, I ended up sending a letter to the Linux Foundation essentially saying, open source security or open source software is everywhere. It's great. We love it. But you know, we need to figure out how we as the United States government can better help support and ensure open source software quality, security, reliability, all of these things. I don't actually know how that letter was originally received at the Linux Foundation. Clearly, I was not there at that time. But you know, I, I don't think the open source software community is particularly used to having a lot of regulatory and, and legislative intention on it. And I think the, the point that I wanted to make in this very brief talk uh, today is that that intention is increasing. I am clearly not with the United States Congress anymore, but I was not the only person who was starting to look at this. Um, Another letter that we ended up sending when I was still at the Energy and Commerce Committee was to the Department of Health and Human Services essentially saying, thou shalt go to the healthcare community and you will figure out how to make them start using software bill of materials for medical devices, for hospital pieces of software, whatever the case may be. Um, that was quickly followed by a commitment by HHS to then start doing that. Uh, the National Telecommunications and Information administration, NTIA, has been working on that for over the last year and a half. Uh, and it's not just HHS who's interested, the Department of Defense, this is becoming a huge issue for the Department of Defense. They're very interested in prominence, they're very interested in pedigree. The Department of Defense wants to know who's writing their, their systems. And right now they, they don't know that in a lot of cases because when you, when you get a piece of technology, uh, is software in particular, you're essentially getting a big black box. You don't know what the components are. Um, I know that there are some arguments to that. <laughs> I don't know that we have time for questions right at this moment. But uh, the, the, the basic premise, and this was something that I had written in the letter that we in originally sent. Actually, I'm now mixing up my documents. This was in a document that I wrote while I was still at Congress, is that um, you can't protect what you don't know you have. And this, this was a, a realization that, you, that my committee had and that many others within the federal government started to have following Heartbleed and then following WannaCry in particular, those two issues were what really put this into the spotlight, I think, for the federal government. And we essentially said, you know, the, as software becomes increasingly intertwined with these systems that uh, what, what we were referring to them as cyber physical systems, medical devices, grid, things like that, it's, it's no longer just a risk of data breach and having people's private information out where it shouldn't be. It's now the concern that you're gonna have somebody killed because their medical device experiences some kind of issue in the middle of a life-saving treatment. And so, uh, like I said, I'm gonna make this as quick as possible. But um, point that I wanted to make for this room is that you know I, I think um, from an open source standpoint, there is going to be increasing, increasing amounts of regulatory and legislative attention on this. And one, whatever the community can do to start preparing for that, I think it's now is really the time. Um, and, I, and I think the other thing that I would bring up, and this is again, having had the experience that I had, Congress does not have tech experts, and a lot of the federal agencies don't have tech experts. And so when they start designing solutions that are meant to address tech issues, they can often do it not very well. Uh, so one thing that I would recommend, um, and one thing that, that we, that I am doing in my current position with uh, the Linux Foundation, if we can 
present the federal government with solutions that they can use, that is going to be much better than having the federal government impose solutions upon the community. Uh, and so to whatever extent, whether or not it's software bill of materials or any of these other issues around software component transparency, um, the faster that, that the open source community can sort of accept that this attention is, is coming, that it's not going to go away, and that uh, the better solutions that we can provide to the federal government, the better everything is going to go. And I'll actually end there. Mm. Forgive me if you could turn the microphone on. Sorry, I, I think that the, the, the open source community has done a great deal of work already. To be honest, I think it's Congress that needs to catch up to our community. There's a lot of work done on the hardware level, on securing the software supply chain, on security, on reproducible builds, and on uh, licenses. So I, I think that part of the problem, quite frankly, is that uh, Congress has been captive to lobbying. And I, I think that's, um, that, that's where a lot of money is spent for regulatory capture. But I think that uh, significant investigation of the open source and free software community needs to be done by Congress. So, so this is, what, and I would completely agree, but what I would, I would warn is that Congress has the weight and the control over what they do that they don't have to. They can impose solutions without doing that, and they frankly will. And so that is where I would say, um, Knowing, knowing that this is happening, knowing those solutions, it would be far better for the community to proactively reach out to them to say, here are these prepackaged solutions. Everyone should talk to Kate Stewart about what's going on at the NTIA process if you were very interested in that. Um, but here are these prepackaged solutions. You don't need to come up with something, just use what's already there. But people are going to have to proactively give those to Congress. Congress is not going to come to the community, I would say. If we're can I just add Karen Copenhaver for Congress? <laughs> well, a round of applause for Jessica and also Mike Dolan, which 